Welcome to the podcast series of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Uh, I'm uh, Ephraim Inbar, president of the Institute. And our guest today is uh, Professor Ethan Gilboa, a senior fellow at the Institute and a world known expert on American Israeli relations. Uh, he has a rich academic background. Uh, and uh, he received his MA and PhD from Harvard University and has been a visiting professor at several top American and European universities, including Harvard, Tufts, UCLA, uh, Georgetown, the University of Hamburg, the Vienna School of International Studies, and the University of Pennsylvania. He published many books uh, and articles and won several international awards. He also served as chair of the Israeli Communication Association and frequently contributes uh, to op-ed articles, to newspapers and news websites. Um, and uh, I am very proud to have uh, Ethan Gilboa as a colleague. And uh, he is, of course, an expert, uh, not only on American Israel relations, He's uh, what's called an Amer Americanologue. He understands very well the United States and its uh, Middle East policy. Uh, Professor Gilboa, thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, how would you describe the US assistance uh, to Israel during the war against Hamas uh, or Daesh in Gaza? Uh, since uh, Hamas, Daesh atrocities uh, uh, in uh, Western uh, Negev on October 7th, and uh, following uh, the war that Israel is, be, is fighting uh, inside Gaza, the United States uh, conducts uh, relations with Israel as if the two countries uh, have a de facto defense treaty. Uh, we can observe a number of American uh, actions uh, taken to support Israel. Uh, the most important one was uh, an airlift lift of uh, ammunition and, uh, and uh, military equipment. Uh, this is going to be a long war. Israel needs um, uh, ammunition. And uh, until now, uh, there, were, uh, there were tens of uh, uh, American cargo planes uh, landing in Israel and providing uh, ammunition uh, and, uh, and equipment. Number two, uh, deterrence. Uh, the United States from the beginning uh, was uh, concerned about the expansion of the war into other areas of the Middle East, uh, primarily uh, toward uh, north, uh, Hezbollah, which is uh, uh, which is a proxy of Iran, and um, President Biden himself and uh, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State, uh, warned Iran and Hezbollah not to intervene militarily uh, in uh, in the war uh, in Gaza. Uh, number three, uh, diplomatic uh, assistance. Um, the United Nations Security Council, as well as the United Nations Assembly, uh, have been uh, passing absurd resolutions, one-sided resolutions, not even mentioning <coughs> Hamas's uh, atrocities. And the United States, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, at one time, vetoed uh, a Russian uh, resolution. And uh, number four uh, is... Um, uh, financial aid. Uh, the U.S. House of Representatives just uh, uh, last week approved a special uh, uh, aid to Israel worth $14.3 billion. This is in addition to um, uh, $3.8 that Israel is receiving annually from the United States. So we see substantial, perhaps unprecedented, American uh, military and diplomatic assistance to Israel. Um, Biden has uh, warned uh, Hezbollah uh, not to intervene in the war and uh, deployed uh, uh, air carriers and even a submarine is on its way. Uh, do we think that uh, if we'll see an escalation and we see a gradual escalation on part of, uh, of Hezbollah, uh, Will the U.S. Uh, use force against them? You rightly mentioned the uh, substantial deployment of American uh, military power. 
uh, in the Middle East. Uh, we, the United States um, dispatched um, uh, aircraft carrier Ford, the most advanced in the American Navy. It is, uh, it is facing uh, Lebanon. Also another aircraft carrier, uh, Eisenhower, uh, is in the Persian Arab Gulf. Uh, the United States also uh, the, uh, deployed uh, strategic bombers, uh, B-1B, uh, with tremendous firepower uh, in, uh, in Britain, and also sent um, uh, units of Marines for rapid, rapid intervention. Uh, and uh, more recently, just a, a few days ago, uh, a nuclear submarine is also has also been deployed uh, to the Persian Gulf. This is a huge, uh, a huge uh, assemblance of American power. The United States uh, is concerned. Uh, it does not want another major war in the Middle East on the top of the Russian war in Ukraine, and uh, and is not sure uh, whether or not. Uh, the Hezbollah and Iran uh, are getting the message. Therefore, it has to be backed up with, uh, with um, military power as well as with statements. Uh, at the beginning, uh, President Biden himself said, don't, don't think of intervening. Don't, don't, don't. But uh, a few days ago, uh, American officials, um, defense officials said, if Iran and Hezbollah were to intervene, the United States will respond. Given, uh, given the fact that Israel is um, uh, the most important American ally in the Middle East and the stakes uh, that, um, that are here, I think that if uh, deterrence failed and uh, Hezbollah and the orders from Iran decide uh, to attack, uh, they attack Israel, um, like escalating into a major attack, not the kind of low intensity exchanges of fire that uh, we see every day now, but a major attack on Israel, it seems to me that Biden would not have any other choice but to respond and respond forcefully because otherwise the United States would lose credibility among enemies and friends alike. Is this indeed the main American interest to prevent escalation? Yes. Uh, the United States is, is helping Ukraine uh, to fight Russia. Uh, it is, uh, it, it is not, not only the United States itself, but also American Arab allies uh, in the region, Saudi Arabia, Persian Gulf uh, countries, uh, are very much concerned about uh, Iran using other proxies. Uh, Houthi, Houthis in Yemen uh, have already launched long-range missiles and, uh, and uh, drones uh, to attack Israel, they were they were intercepted. Uh, the, the United States is also concerned about the Arab Street, uh, Jordan, uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and other Arab countries uh, would not be sad if Hamas uh, goes. They they don't like Hamas. They think that Hamas is a source of uh, instability, violence. It is linked to the Muslim Brotherhood. And so, uh, so they want to see Hamas crushed and and evicted from from Gaza. Uh, but uh, if uh, the war expands, this could even more increase public uh, opposition, uh, demonstrations, uh, perhaps violent demonstrations in Arab countries. Therefore, there are several reasons for not wanting to expand the war. Also, for Israel. The main goal is Gaza. If uh, the war expanded, I think Israel can handle more than one arena. But uh, it, it, but um, uh, a, an expanded war could uh, damage uh, the main effort in Gaza. So this is another reason for uh, wishing uh, uh, the war to stay just in Gaza and not expand into other areas of the Middle East. Uh, you know, from an Israeli point of view, uh, they wonder uh, in Israel, why is the U.S. insisting on humanitarian aid to Gaza without de demanding a quid pro quo from Hamas, uh, at least uh, information about the hostages they are keeping, uh, particularly since some of the hostages are American citizens? 
Yes, uh, this is a very good question uh, because uh, one would imagine that uh, human, that you need reciprocity in humanitarian aid, and if uh, humanitarian uh, assistance is uh, or is uh, given uh, to to the Gazans, um, it has to be conditioned on uh, on humanitarian um, uh, uh, concessions uh, by by uh, by Hamas. The problem is this, and uh, this is why the United States is insisting on uh, on uh, humanitarian assistance. Number one, it's very difficult uh, to leave 2.2 uh, million Gazans without um, basic necessities, uh, food, medicine, uh, and, um, uh, and water. And so, um, so this is one reason. The second reason is Hamas couldn't care less from Hamas's perspective, all the Gazans could die as long as they survive. So it's not, if you tell Hamas, look, we are going to condition a humanitarian assistance on your own um, humanitarian uh, concessions, then it wouldn't work because Hamas uh, does not care. And third, uh, there is a pressure in the United States itself, pressure from uh, all kinds of human rights organizations, um, that say that the uh, United States uh, should should demand or should pressure Israel to agree to humanitarian um, humanitarian assistance. Uh, the U.S. the U.S. Uh, is speaking now about humanitarian pauses, not ceasefire, but humanitarian pauses to to allow humanitarian assistance. I think the Israeli position is very clear from now on. Humanitarian, uh, uh, humanitarian assistance um, and pauses, humanitarian pauses will depend on um, uh, releasing uh, hostages. We have about 240 hostages and uh, providing information about uh, their, uh, their, uh, their status. And, um, and I think this is right. This is what should be done. But um, the problem is that um, that uh, uh, stopping humanitarian assistance uh, would not help the war effort. This has been an American uh, doctrine to provide uh, humanitarian assistance in order to keep international legitimacy for more aggressive warfare. So it seems odd that um, that uh, you have one side that agrees to humanitarian assistance and the other side completely ignores it. But this is another strange reality of the Middle East. As an expert on foreign policy, you know it's always linked also somehow to domestic policy. And this is probably true also of the United States. And uh, Biden's, uh, President Biden's support for Israel is triggering uh, much criticism uh, from his own party, uh, mostly from the progressives and the Muslim element in the Democratic Party. And according to a New York Times uh, poll, recent poll, uh, President Biden is trailing Trump in swing states. Uh, do you think that uh, we may see an erosion in uh, uh, Biden's uh, firm uh, position on behalf of Israel if uh, uh, there are uh, there is a danger of losing the 2024 uh, presidential election. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, usually, uh, international issues uh, are not important in presidential elections. Americans are much more concerned about the economy, unemployment, inflation, um, uh, 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 oil. Uh, education, health, uh, immigration, these are more important issues. Even for American Jews, we found that Israel and the Israeli-Palestinian issue are not ranked high on their uh, calculations whom to vote for. But in this uh, particular case, it seems to be changing. And um, yes, um, uh, some people argue that uh, if uh, uh, if uh, Biden loses uh, support from the progressives or the Muslims, then it, he could risk uh, losing to Trump uh, in the presidential elections. 
the Muslims are uh, the most aggressive. Uh, uh, they say now, uh, no ceasefire, no voting. No ceasefire, no voting. They demand ceasefire. It is interesting to note that uh, American, uh, the Muslims in America completely ignored uh, Hamas's atrocities as if, uh, if it never happened. And, uh, and um, uh, progressives, uh, some Muslim pro progressive uh, members of the House of Representatives like Rashida Talib and Ilhan Omar are saying, we are not going to vote for, for Biden. Well, the choice is not that great because if they don't vote for Biden, they have uh, they have two choice, cho choices. Either they vote for Trump, who said that um, that he would not allow any Palestinian to immigrate to the United to the United States and would deport those who support Hamas in the United States. So unlikely, but they could stay home. The same is true for the progressives, or although there is some division. Among the progressives, there are those who have been shocked by uh, Hamas's atrocities and uh, seem to be somewhat less uh, critical of Israel. Uh, even Bernie Sanders himself, who said uh, he, he he said he opposed a ceasefire with Hamas because how you could have a ceasefire with an organization that wants to destroy you? Uh, he's also for. Uh, minimizing civilian casualties, but this is also uh, an Israeli goal. And he did not explain how you can destroy Hamas, which he wants, and at the same time, uh, not uh, not uh, uh, causing collateral damage, because this would be impossible given Hamas's uh, uses of human shields, uh, using the uh, the, um, the Gazans as human shields for its own facilities and, and, and people. But there is some debate among the progressive uh, branch of the Democratic Party. Uh, so uh, I don't, I, right now, I think that uh, I don't, I, 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 that it's not uh, Biden's uh, uh, strong support for Israel that is uh, somehow eroding his tending uh, uh, versus Trump. I think uh, in his case, uh, the major problem is age. Uh, Trump is only about three years younger than him, but uh, 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 Trump looks very, very energetic and Biden looks older. So I think age is a major problem here. And, uh, and uh, I would not be surprised if uh, there would be pressure on him uh, to quit. The race and appoint somebody else. I think the talks, uh, the threats of the Muslims and the progressives uh, should not be taken seriously because um, because um, they would have no other choice. And uh, and uh, if 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 they were to abstain, to stay home, like the progressives did in two thousand sixteen, then Trump will win. Can you see uh, down the road uh, the American and American diplomatic effort uh, to stop Israel uh, before attaining its war objectives? Again, I hope not. But obviously, we have a window of opportunity, uh, and um, so uh, so uh, hopefully, uh, Israel is going to be able uh, to uh, keep civilian casualties and the humanitarian crisis uh, in Gaza under control. Uh, but you don't have all the time in the world. Uh, the reason for that is international legitimacy. Right now, Israel enjoys uh, substantial international legitimacy. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, October 7 uh, is, is old story. It happened a, a, bit, a month ago. And if you look at media coverage, uh, in the first uh, two weeks, uh, the focus was on Hamas's uh, uh, atrocities. Now the pictures uh, are from Gaza showing much uh, destruction, death, and so, and, and media coverage is, is problematic. So uh, international pressure, domestic pressure, uh, from uh, the enemies of Israel in the United States, uh, uh, including, Muslims and progressives 
uh, could uh, could mount pressure on on Biden uh, to uh, somehow uh, reduce military activity in Gaza. I don't think that right now the American position is no ceasefire because the United States wants Hamas to be destroyed. But uh, and, and uh, but and they want a temporary humanitarian pauses. But I think that we have about two more weeks from the time of this recording, uh, say um, toward uh, the middle of November, maybe the third week in November, uh, to do whatever we want. I think in two in two weeks, three weeks, if we don't achieve our main goal, uh, the U.S. might exert pressure on Israel to reduce the level of attack. I don't think the United States will tell Israel not to stop, but it could say, uh, as other leaders in the world are suggesting, to reduce uh, uh, air bombing and and um, and uh, other uh, military activities, uh, intensive military activities on the ground, and I think this is what Israel would like to have to do anyway, but um, but um, uh, the, mil the military achievements would dictate that, and uh, I think uh, I think Israel is explaining to the United States very well, and uh, fortunately uh, we have now at the Department of Defense a former general, who um, um, Lloyd Austin was commander of, uh, of uh, Central Command of the United States. He knows very well how to uh, fight uh, terrorists. He fought uh, Daesh. So, uh, so he, he would best understand the circumstances of Israeli military operations in Gaza, and hopefully he would uh, counterbalance pressure from other uh, internal or domestic sources on the United States to stop Israel. Uh, taking into consideration that uh, Hamas is, to some extent, an Iranian proxy, are uh, the Americans ready to change uh, their policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran? This is also a very good question because uh, from, uh, from Obama on, the United States has not been able to contain uh, the Iranian nuclear weapons program, and um, and I think that um, what what happened uh, uh, what happened um, in Gaza uh, is demonstrating the kind of uh, threat that Iran and its proxies, Hezbollah, and pro-Iranian uh, militias in Syria and Iraq and the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, we have too many of them, and all of them have to be dealt with. So I think that um, I think the United States um, will have to open its eyes and to understand that it's very uh, difficult to negotiate with Iran. Um, uh, <clears throat> Obama uh, made a deal, a nuclear deal with Iran, did not did not work. Trump uh, Trump canceled that deal, did not work. Uh, uh, Biden thought of renegotiating uh, a deal did not work. So Iran cannot be trusted. Iran is not interested in any deal. Iran is interested in, uh, in uh, developing uh, nuclear weapons and missiles to carry them. It is using um, proxies uh, to achieve its goals. Uh, it, it, it announced several times that they want uh, to create a multi-arena uh, warfare against Israel from all directions, including from Israeli Arabs, uh, uh, Judea and Samaria, uh, Syria, Iraq, uh, Lebanon, uh, Houthis. And um, and um, so it's very clear now where Russia, where Iran is heading. Also, there are global ramifications of this war. This is not just in American eyes and also in European understanding. This is not just a war between Israel and Hamas, uh, Hamas Daesh in Gaza. This war has uh, regional as well as global implications. Iran has become a significant uh, member of the uh, of the axis of evil that includes also Russia and China. 
They are very uh, over over Ukraine, over the war in Ukraine. Iran has become uh, an ally of Russia. China uh, 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 made a, a strategic agreement with Iran in 2021, a significant one. So, so uh, from from American, Israeli, and Western perspectives, uh, uh, Iran is now an enemy. And with enemy, you fight. You don't. Uh, you don't uh, uh, make any kinds of agreements. It could be an opportunity uh, for the United States if they were to expand the war, uh, perhaps to use force against um, against Iranian nuclear facilities. I'm not so sure that the United States or Biden really at this time, given the war in Ukraine, given the war in Gaza would have uh, the uh, the uh, determination, would have the will, the willingness, the will uh, to engage in that kind of attack. Uh, I'm sure you are following uh, very closely uh, American public uh, opinion. How do, does the American public view the war against Hamas, uh, Daesh? Uh, are they aware of uh, the links to Iran, are they aware uh, that this war, maybe it's a war of a uh, uh, right against evil, virtues against the bad guys? What is the feelings? Uh, what are the feelings in the American public? You are requiring too much of, of uh, the American <laughs> public, of ordinary Americans. Uh, they don't know much about, I mean, at least this is part of the problem. Uh, many of them don't know who, who Hamas is. Uh, and where is uh, the West? Where is Judea and Samaria? Where is Israel at all? Uh, many of them uh, have never traveled in the United States itself, let alone abroad. But uh, I've done much research about American public opinion since 1948, and uh, and and surveys and polls conducted in the United States uh, since uh, the since October 7th, the day, the day of cruel atrocities. Um, moving on through uh, the first month of the war, there is substantial support in American public opinion toward Israel and towards Biden assistance to Israel. Uh, if I look at, uh, at questions or issues such as, do you think that Israel is a strategic asset for the United States? Like 70% say, say yes. Are you, are, you, are you sympathizing more with Palestinians or Israel? A huge gap. Uh, between uh, between the Palestinians and Israel, Palestinians, not Hamas. Uh, another question would be: Do you support uh, uh, military aid to Israel? Like I, uh, we got the number, like two thirds. Never, I, I don't think it ever happened. Maybe after the nineteen sixty seven war, that you have such uh, a high degree of support in foreign aid, which is never popular in American uh, public opinion. Uh, do you support uh, American? substantial assistance to Israel. Again, like uh, two thirds say yes. So uh, right now, uh, the numbers in comparison uh, to earlier uh, situations of conflict and warfare are very high. And in comparison to other, uh, other conflicts and warfare in other places, like right now in Ukraine, uh, the numbers are very, very high. There's one problem, though, and that is uh, age. The lower you go with age, support is also going down. This is, uh, this is a phenomenon we have, um, we have noticed a long time ago. I think it has to do something with social media. The Economist Research Unit just published a few days ago a very interesting study. They compare attitudes toward Israel on social media, uh, where the Palestinians are getting a much more uh, favorable uh, attitude, uh, favorable um, uh, attitudes, with public opinion, <laughs> and they found that in the social media, the Palestinians are, uh, are, are viewed much more favorable than Israel. But this is not the case with public opinion in general. But this is the case with young people, even, even American Jews, even evangelical Jews. Young people are more idealistic. They don't believe in war. 
uh, they think that uh, that uh, Israel is is too aggressive. They don't know anything from what is happening in in in, in the region here. I teach in the United States complete ignorance of what of what Hamas is. They never know that Hamas has opposed any peace with Israel and therefore is a force against peace, not uh, not uh, anything else. So uh, so uh, the conclusion is that uh, that. Biden enjoys substantial public support for his policy and for his assistance to Israel. And this is another uh, way of countering the pressure of Muslims, progressives, and uh, other segments in the American society which uh, hate Israel. Uh, we have uh, heard in recent years uh, more voices among American juries uh, uh, are critical of Israel. And uh, do you think that the recent uh, war changed American Jewish attitudes? I think so. And there is uh, there is a clear reason for that. Uh, American Jews are mostly liberal. This is why uh, about 70% of them vote for Democratic uh, candidates. In recent years, um, there has been much tension uh, between American Jewry and Israel over, over all kinds of issues. More recent, most recently about the judicial overhaul. Also, somehow uh, Netanyahu antagonized the American Jewry by uh, supporting uh, Republican candidates uh, to president and uh, aligning himself and Israel too much with the evangelicals. And so, uh, and so there was much tension. But I think what happened now is two things. Number one, uh, uh, the atrocities expose the, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, character of potential partners to Israel. If this is Hamas and, and uh, the, the Palestinian Authority cannot even negotiate with Hamas anything, does not control anything, how you can reach any agreement, a significant agreement uh, with uh, these kind of organizations, these kind of people. So this is like a shocking revelation of, of, uh, uh, of who you, <coughs> sorry, of who, of you are supposed to be negotiating and making agreements and how you can trust these agreements. This is number one. Number two, which I think is perhaps even more, even stronger, uh, many liberal American Jews have been highly disappointed by the attitudes of, of uh, non-Jewish liberals in the United States. The support, uh, substantial support sometimes, the demonstrations, like uh, the recent demonstration in Washington, D.C., uh, where Muslims and progressives were demonstrating against Israel, I think this uh, this also uh, showed uh, how much you can trust uh, progressives. Uh, there's no there's no issue that could be more different uh, between progressives and Hamas. The values of American progressives are exactly the opposite of of Hamas. Yet uh, they they tend to support anything that the Palestinians do, including Hamas, and. Uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, this was also this is also a crisis uh, between American liberals, American Jewish liberals, and non-Jewish liberals with uh, serious ramifications. And also, I need to say, uh, uh, the levels of anti-Semitism in the United States uh, went up tremendously by hundred percent. There's also violence against Jews in in the United States. Just the other day. Uh, a, a Jew in California was killed by a pro-Palestinian demonstrator. And uh, so uh, American Jews are now uh, afraid that um, those forces in the United States uh, that oppose uh, Israel and are critical of Israel, also most of them are anti-American, uh, somehow are, are, um, are uh, moving against them. So there's like a personal community level uh, uh, threat here. And I believe that uh, right now uh, we see much more support from American Jewry to Israel than you than, 
than uh, was that has been in recent years and i believe it will continue even after the war uh, you are also an expert on international communication public diplomacy i know that you have uh, written several uh, seminal pieces in in the academic literature on this subject and uh, you are also involved personally in in, in the israeli uh, effort uh, to tell the truth and uh, why is israel uh, uh, losing many times the battle for the hearts and minds of people yeah we have been working on it for a long time part of it is uh, simply objective and part of it is uh, the success of the palestinians uh to win uh, the battle for the hearts and the minds of people and part of it is uh, israel's uh, failure to address um, uh, the palestinian campaigns and and uh, and other issues part of it is organizational uh for political reasons um israeli government uh uh the prime minister Netanyahu divided public diplomacy into like four different five different uh, ministries so we have uh, many ministries uh, dealing with public diplomacy but none is effective uh another reason is that um that you that you count you rely on uh on um, civ the civilian society and non-governmental organizations i think this is a, this is a good idea Uh, to do that uh, because um, because um, uh, civil society organizations and individuals influentials uh, are much more credible have more much more credibility than government uh, there are some objective uh, problems uh, the Palestinians um, have been controlling uh, the social media uh, they have well, first of all there are many Muslim many more Muslims in the world and many Arabs and uh, and uh, so Palestinians have been able to exploit uh, this advantage uh, in the United States um, uh, we see much utilization of anti-israeli behavior on in on encompasses the BTS movement has been has been very successful in brainwashing uh, students to believe that Israel is to be blamed for uh, all the all the uh, all the violence and terrorism uh, in the Middle East uh, and uh, you you can find also uh, Jewish groups like Jewish voice for peace or if not now and so American Jews are saying not in my name they hate Israel auto auto anti-semitism yeah they say how we can you are Jews how we can be anti-semite well if you have anti-semitic ideas you are anti-semite even though you are a Jew so so young people especially but also also older people uh when they see Jews uh severely criticizing Israel uh, they say oh they must be true so Israel is presented as a Nazi like uh uh, uh state uh it is uh it is apartheid state uh it is racist it is uses um uh, uh much violence against the uh, oppressed oppresses the arabs and the palestinians and 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 uh many people buy that those uh, lie uh, those uh, uh those lies uh, and cheating uh to the point i as you know i teach in the united states uh, uh on several occasions those uh those uh, people on campus uh have uh, have been trying to To, uh, to to stop me to silence me to silence silence me and uh so these people talk about freedom of speech they want freedom of speech they want academic freedom but only for themselves and uh so academia is problematic the media is problematic <coughs> we have seen the media professional and ethical failures in this war especially uh the fabricated uh The news about uh, uh, about uh, the explosion uh, near a hospital uh, in Gaza, uh, New York Times, BBC, World, uh, and other major media outlets, but without any criticism, without any reservation, 
uh, Hamas's claim it was a, it was Israeli airplane dropping a bomb on a hospital causing 500 uh, dead uh, dead people. Turns out that it was uh, a misfired Islamic Jihad missile that fell on on a on a public uh, on on a, on a, on a parking lot, and, and the number 500 is highly questionable, uh, but. Uh, it didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, disturb the um, New York Times uh, to to trust the uh, Hamas. Oh, Ministry of Health in Gaza. Ministry of Health, Health uh, Ministry of Health in Gaza is Hamas's Ministry of Health in Gaza. They don't even indicate that, and uh, so it's it's quite absurd that uh, newspapers and television stations um, believe more. A terror organization like Hamas than uh, uh, democratic information coming from Israel. So, uh, and, and I see it uh, time and again and again in in uh, major media outlets, both broadcast and and print media. They are all against Israel. Obviously, this makes it difficult for Israel to uh, to uh, mount uh, uh, an, an, an an effective public diplomacy campaign. But I think that uh, in this war, we see uh, many uh, organizations built uh, to counter uh, propaganda, lies, much of what the Muslims and Hamas and, and even the Palestinian Authority are distributing uh, is false uh, and, 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 um, and, and distorting uh, at best the truth. And maybe, uh, maybe um, those organizations and individuals if we can uh, maintain that kind of counteractivity uh, in the post-war situation, would improve Israel's overall public diplomacy. Uh, Professor Eitan Gilboa, I want to thank you for very much for uh, giving uh, your time and for your insights. And I uh, say to everybody that is listening, Shalom from Jerusalem. Thank you, Efraim.